Hey everyone, Ashley Mayu and Mike Beer here with the Daily Racing Forum this Saturday at Gulfstream Park. They have an 11 race card that's going to end with the pulpit stick. Seven and a half furlongs on the turf course, $100,000 purse. And two-year-olds here in the spotlight, Mike, and it's a big field. We're going to have 11 runners top to bottom. We'll take a look at this group. Overall, maybe a couple horses stand out, but in terms of trying to maybe play the exotics, a lot of directions to go. Yeah, I think you could probably try to make cases for some of the horses that perhaps will be good prices in here. It, it does feel like there are horses who could be a little bit interested, a bunch of surface switchers though. So we'll see how all that stuff works out. I do think the number eight for Plector I read noted, he's probably going to be the favorite. He's the horse to beat. And you point out the surface switches. That's kind of the interesting thing here. No horses with experience over the Gulfstream Park turf course due to that renovation project that they've had. So we see a lot of horses moving from the Tapita to the turf. You think it would play well. You hope it plays well. And a lot of them will take to it. But you never know what will happen. So this is the field of 11. We'll take a look at the time form U.S. pace projections here. And it projects a fast pace to the outside horses in here. The number 10 to KO on the 11. Okiro looked to be involved as well as the number three, double your money from more towards the inside. Yeah, I guess those two outside horses are the key as far as this pace goes. Maybe they'll just be, you know, sort of um, dead set on trying to get forward here from the outside. And that could heat things up because I'll be honest, actually, when I went through the race, I, I wasn't sure that this was going to be a particularly fast pace, but maybe it will be. Yeah, I'm not sure either. I mean, I could see maybe Akiro being forwardly placed. You see the blinkers on switch and has been close or somewhat close to some fast paces, but a double your money has been forward. Have the times been that fast? Not really, especially in those last two efforts. So it'll make for an interesting event. As we mentioned, though, a nice field of 11 that'll kick off with the number one prevent. This one of the Juan Alvarado barn here for BC Racing was second last time out in the armed forces and has been forwardly placed. But I don't know your thoughts, Mike. I think I look at two of the last three and this one is just kind of quit late and deep stretch. Yeah, agreed. I'm I'm not sure how good this horse is, and I'm not sure that he necessarily benefited from the stretch out in distance last time. He did finish second in a stage race, but um, man, talk about a slow pace. They were crawling up on the lead that day. Um, he had all the best of it. He just wasn't good enough. He, he, it's not like he even came close uh, to holding on at the end. I just didn't think he ran that well last time. No, he's going to cut back, I guess, slightly to seven and a half, but still has to go around two turns on the Gulfstream Park turf course. The number two, Liam's Journey. This one to the Mike Maker Barn. We'll take a look at the most recent effort. Mike, it's like our favorite race. It's the grade two Pilgrim. Spirit Prince is in here. He ends up actually coming back in a couple starts to win the Central Park. But these two are going to dead heat here. Uh, the two in front of them, Agate Road and Fomineo. I, I thought this is a good performance. I don't know if it was excellent. Yeah, I didn't think it was excellent either, but he, he certainly ran fine in here. And maybe ultimately it's just a better field than the one that he's facing on Saturday. So he's got that going for him. Um, he also got a really good trip in this race. Uh, he did get sort of bumped around a little bit at the end, but I think he was already getting out finished at that point. Um, and I just didn't really feel like he had some kind of huge excuse. It's a good spot for him. I'm not going to argue that, but I don't think I'd take any kind of short price on him. Now he's had about two months since that race. Uh, and I think the nice thing to point out, he does have a really nice work. You don't see too many bullets, I don't think, from Might Maker on the main track there at Gulfstream Park. But 58 and 3 is nothing to laugh at. Certainly was quick on the morning of December 2nd. To his outsides, the number three, Double Your Money, who ended up finishing eighth in the Bourbon. We'll show the replay with a different horse later. The pace wasn't that hot, and I thought he really got tired late there. Yeah, I agree. I, I don't think he had, it, it is a race that was won by a long shot from last to first. And so that kind of, in some ways makes you feel like, well, maybe he was just compromised by racing uh, close to the pace in there, but I didn't really look at it that way. He was wide around the first turn, but after that, I thought he got a really good trip. I did not think the pace was that fast. And at the end of the day, he just wasn't good enough to beat a horse like that. Maybe this is a better spot for him too, but I, I didn't love that last performance. I didn't really want to bet him in here. It's definitely class relief. And, um, you know, when he showed the time form U.S. pace projections, I think something to point out, I, I think he's not necessarily quick enough. I don't know who's going to be on the lead ultimately, right? I don't think it's clear cut as we discussed, but I think he might have to learn to sit just off of it and maybe at the seven and a half for a long distance, maybe those two things is what he needs. Yeah, I'll agree with that too. I mean, especially you look at his last two races and he's right up there on the pace, but neither one of those paces was fast. The number four reminders next in the field. This one of the Jose D'Angelo Barn owned by Tammy Bobo. We'll take a look at the armed forces last time out. Now, this is one that's going to actually finish right behind for event. But I think in terms of trip, this is the more promising effort. I mean, this horse is going to make up some serious ground in the final stages. Yeah, I thought this was the horse that you want out of the armed forces in here. He, he basically had no chance in here. This is a race that was slow early 
and fast late. And this horse is making up ground. You'll see him come into the picture at the end. I mean, he's closest right at the finish, just kept making up ground. I thought it was an underrated performance. You know, he's an audible, which I don't love. Um, I don't know if you agree with this or not, but I'm going to be surprised if audible turns out to be a good turf sire. Um, the flip side of that is there's a lot of turf on the bottom. This horse is a, is a half to two stakes winners on the grass. Yeah, I think he's got enough at least to maybe carry him in the spot, but I agree about Audible. Not sure about turf progeny from him. Now the number five palm tree, this one out of the Brendan Walsh barn, also raced in the bourbon like so many horses in here. Prior to that, though, was able to graduate at Kentucky Downs going six and a half. Very different configuration, but all in all, I thought that was a decent effort. Yeah, I thought he ran pretty well breaking his maiden too. Um, and it was a shorter distance. He gets to go a little bit shorter here. So, you know, maybe that'll help him. I thought he ran well that day though. Um, his bourbon, I don't know, he ran okay in there. I thought his trip was really, really good right until the end. And if you pull the replay, you'll see him just sort of get into some really late traffic. I don't know. I thought he was already beat at that point. Um, and I thought up until then he had a really good trip, but that doesn't mean he's not competitive here. I think he's a contender. Louis has that turf experience, and Louis Sai is booked to ride. Next in the field is number six, Summer Storm Strick. Uh, this is a local horse who was second last time out in that starter optional claiming event, but we talked about the armed forces. This one didn't fare well at all. Yeah, I mean, he was also, you know, well off of that pace, and he broke, you know, he was off to a terrible start that day. So maybe it's enough of an excuse, but I wanted to see him do at least some running in the armed forces. He didn't do any, and then he came back, and he disappointed again last time, and I wouldn't bet him off of anything he did in his first three starts. Horse that might be a little inconsistent, maybe a sleeper in here is the number seven general ledger. This one of the Safi Joseph Jr. Barn was a winner on debut, which I know this horse went off favorite and Safi's numbers with firsters has gotten better over the last couple of years, but I feel like his horses really start to bloom and start too. And I thought this one raced very well in that second start, but last time out, not sure what to make of, of that race against the Florida breads. Yeah, that's the race you have to reconcile if you want to go back to this horse. And here, I don't know what happened in there, but he was three to five and he was he just didn't run in that race. It was a pretty poor performance. I'm assuming there's some kind of an excuse for it. His first two races, I thought, were were really good. And personally, I didn't feel like five and a half furlongs is what this horse wants at all. Mm -hmm. To me, it looks like he wants to go longer. They're going to stretch him out. There's turf all over this pedigree. Yeah, the turf pedigree is certainly enticing. To his outsides, the number eight noted. This one will probably be favored in here as we talk about. It's Todd Fletcher, Mike Rapoli teaming up with Arado Ortiz Jr. Didn't take to the dirt last time out in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile. I shouldn't say didn't take to it. I, I know we had a win in the Sapling, but we're just talking about very different waters between the race at Monmouth and then the race at Santa Anita. But to me, his turf races are the ones to look at. He's been very, very strong on the grass. And we'll take a look at his second place finish in the Bourbon. Yeah, he, he, runs, he runs pretty well in this race. I mean, another race, I thought he got a really good trip in here, but he's going to come running at the end, and he's just going to get nailed. I mean, again, the horse that runs him down at the end here is a big long shot coming from last to first, and so you feel like you want to be disappointed with it, and then Can Group comes back, and he finishes fourth, beating a couple lengths at the Breeders' Cup. That horse is actually pretty good. I don't know. Bur this horse ran well in the Bourbon. They were just taking a shot at the Breeders' Cup Juvenile last time, and it didn't work out. It didn't work out and it worked out okay, though, for his stable mate yeah. back on November 3rd. Next in the field is Shipped Ashore. This one coming out of Monmouth Park was able to win on debut going four and a half. And since then, it didn't take to the turf in the Tyro. Maybe it was part of the distance. It seems like they've gradually wanted to stretch him out. Yeah, he's to me, he's a little bit of a wild card in here, if only because um, his, his two starts since he broke his maiden first time out. They're both in way tougher races um, on different surfaces sprinted. I mean, that turfer, he had no chance in the Tyro behind no name. Mets, who's just wicked fast and wired that field. And he was in a good field again last time in the smoke black and, and didn't really have any chance. I don't know how good he is and I don't know how well he'll, he'll do stretching out on the grass, but he's a wild card in here. I think the thing to point out about the Mammoth race, he, he ends up fifth beaten by 11th, almost splits the field, but there are several next out winners in that race. And you mentioned uh, the winner of that being much the best that day. Now we'll move to his outside, the number 10, Takeo. This one out of the Rodolfo uh, Sanchez Solomon barn was a winner last time out. Has a turf win, which several in here don't, but it was at Laurel. I, I just wonder, I mean, he's made the lead pretty easy on some soft fractions in those last two. Yeah, I agree. We'll see if it's if this pace is just a little bit faster and it works against him. Um, I, I don't know. We'll see what happens. Certainly, he's improved since they finally stretched him out in distance in his last three starts. He's clearly a better horse on turf based on the last two. Um, he even ran pretty well, I thought, two starts back. That was a good field, and they just got this horse at a big price. I don't know if he's going to wind up winning this race, Ashley, but I've seen way worse long shots than this. 
you know, wine collector beat him in that race too back. He comes back to win. And you mentioned stretching him out. I also think a little bit his numbers have obviously improved drastically on the grass, but in his last three, which are the two wins in a second, no blinkers. So maybe the equipment change has been part of that as well. And speaking of equipment changes, the horse on the outside is going to get blinkers for the first time. That being the 11 Okuro. We'll take a look at his most recent effort. Now, all of his efforts have been to Pita sprints, but I thought the way that he was really making up ground here in his most recent outing was pretty impressive. He's only going to miss by a length behind Hall, who I believe was favored in this race. Yeah, he hasn't won since he wired a field the first time out, but he's actually run pretty well from off the pace in each of his last three. So I, I think there's some talent here. I guess there's enough turf pedigree, too. I mean, it's, there's just so much working against this horse. Switching surfaces, stretching all the way out for the first time. He has to do it from the outside post. I mean, I don't know. He's not my kind of horse, but I won't be surprised when he runs well. All right, that's the field of 11 for race number 11. The pulpit stakes this Saturday at Gulfstream Park. It's time for our top selections here and. I think it's pretty tough, Mike, to go against noted just looking at that bourbon performance to back. Yeah, it just kind of feels like the right spot for him switching back to turf here. I put him on top. I know he's going to be a short price. I, I just couldn't talk myself into anybody anybody else. I'm interested in the four reminder. Um, I'll try to get that horse in there somewhere, but I, I, I stuck with noted. Yeah, I like a reminder as well as general ledger. I think they're both sneaky. Very curious to see what their odds will be come post time on Saturday. But this doesn't happen too often. You can see Superfecta boxes here. Mike and I on the same four horses, 8472 for Mike and 8274 for me. It's the pulpit this Saturday at Gulfstream Park. Best of luck.